Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on this beautiful 2019 Audi Q5. Lots and lots of work in the last video where Chris removed that damaged quarter panel and actually started preparing the new one ready to go on. I think you actually got it fitted on there and you wanted to address something that was in the comments. Yes, several comments regarding the inner panel. Yeah. That I forgot. Yeah. Well, it's not forgot. It's still attached to the outer panel. And the reason for doing it that way is because that factory seam, which yeah. is rolled on that arch, is very, very difficult. One, to split, but then to re-seal nicely. Yeah. So... Obviously, when I stripped the car, I done it in pieces. Yeah. But this piece is prepped up ready with the inner, I've, and it is in the thumbnail. Yeah. I the, think what I saw was basically people think that you'd fitted that permanently yeah, yeah. in the last video. Yeah. And you didn't bother putting that bit off. No. There. No. Yeah, but it's so, all it's all one piece apart from that little panel that I think I covered in the last, which yeah. is going to allow me to fully weld that. I guess if you don't repair cars and you don't no, know, no, you that's don't right. know. But that's right. I did see a couple of people saying, Chris, did you forget to put in the inner arch? But absolutely, yeah. Chris would never forget to fit any part on any car. Every part that's removed gets replaced. So we are going to continue on with this one now and actually get all of that quarter panel completely fitted yeah. and hopefully get this one built up and back on its wheels. Let's get on with of course, it. Preparation here is key. Chris is going to mask up the area before he hits it with some zinc rich weld through primer. You need to put that on in between the panels before you weld it up. Obviously, it's a preventative for rust. And of course, we will also fill that with cavity wax once we are complete. Now that's all masked up, it'll move on, get it all cleaned out, remove any other little bits of dirt or dust that he needs out of the way. And on with that new quarter panel, aperture clamps, and of course, mole grips. Very, very briefly, at the end of this little bit of time lapse, you'll see Chris fit the door, double check that all these measurements are perfect, it all lines up nice, then he'll actually remove the door back off of the car again. But I think we're pretty much ready there to put the door on. Chris, where you got to? How far along are you? Yeah, I'm um, ready to weld, mate. Um, ready to go yeah yeah um just wanted to show it all test fitted up for the last time yeah i guess so really i'm gonna have to take that door back off really but there we go we've got quite a nice panel line there mate so all good all the fuse box you've removed all of yeah, that yeah removed that that panel will be the last one to go on it just gives me better access to weld weld that panel in and um yeah all good really you're all pinched up ready to yeah, go yeah i mean you can Cop it from this angle if you want, Rob, to see that panel alignment. Yeah, it's bang And then on, if mate. you cop it from that angle, you see this rubber. Yeah. It touches all the way up, which is obviously what you want. Yeah. Um, sorry, mate, nearly knocked your head off. That's all right. Um, yeah, that, that's butted up there nice. So I shall take this door back off, get the, uh, the, the protection sheets in there and um, get welding. Get welding. Well, the plan was to get it done without the sun coming out. It was meant to be dull today. Yeah, we've but... had a lot of interruptions though, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, and the sun's had our, uh, made it's, its own mind that's up. That's right, it's, that's it's right. Out. It's still a lot cooler yeah, than it was. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Right, mate, let's get this one done and get it back on its wheels. So now with the door removed again, everything in position, we've got the fire blankets on there and Chris will start to weld it up. What he will do, you will notice, he's moving in quite big distance between welds and that is so that the heat is not on top of each other. He won't go from one spot weld to the next, to the next, to the next. He'll sort of do one, move along five, do another one, then move along five and then go back on yourself so that you're not putting all the heat in one place. Well, that guy that's been here doing all the welding and fitness quarters just left, and Chris is back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if only, if only uh, yeah. that that would be nice, it mate, would be, wouldn't it? One, it? One, yeah. two, three, it's done. Yeah, a lot, a lot of work there, welding yeah. that up, yeah. grinding it up, yeah. and of course, it's always twice the amount of work in this heat. It is, yeah. It's awful, yeah, isn't it's it? Two hot days we've had lately, isn't it? Yeah, but and you planned go. on doing it when it was cool, yeah. and it was when yeah. you started in the yeah. morning, but. You're there with it, mate, are you? Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's pretty much there. So it's straight on, get the extraction out, 
get on with the filler work. Oh, really? Yeah. You're already? Yeah. yeah. You are a glutton for punishment because it's nice and warm today. Yeah. It don't feel like that's going to need a lot in it, mate. But we want to get this one to the paint shop ASAP, don't we? Yeah. Really? It's, I um, think there's quite a lot of paint on it. That front, that rear bumper that I it's bought. It's got a small amount of damage. It's got a tiny scratch yeah, on the corner. Right. That's right. That's going to want doing. The door's perfect. Yep. Um, but it's still going to need paint because it's going to be it right will, down yeah, side. It will, yeah. Uh, wing's got a, a door's got a repair on it. Yeah, that's just on that edge yeah, there. Yeah, but not too sad. Did obviously remove that wing and that bit of video. Yeah. And we've got, this is a non-genuine wing, but it is approved. Insurance and they, approved. Insurance yeah. approved. Now, they do two different types. One is just a normal pattern wing, which, let's be fair and be honest, they're not a great fit. No. And sometimes you have to really do play around with them you to do. get them to yeah, fit. So we do. try not to use them. And then, of course, you've got your insurance approved one, which is perfect. And I think, yeah, a little yeah, bit I of body work there. And yeah, that's it. Tailgate's untouched, isn't it? Yes. So it's not too bad. No. So, yeah, we'll get on with it. Mate. I guess I'll get out the front bumper, start stripping it, and having a look for what I need to get because when this yeah. comes back from the paint shop, we want to put it back together, we do. don't we? We do, yeah. All right, mate. Well, have fun and we'll, we'll let you get on. So straight on with a little finger grinder there. Grind up those major seam welds. So the two, the one on the sill and the one at the top by the quarter light window there. And then onto the DA after to clean up that area and prepare it ready to take some body filler. You're only going to need filler on the joints where this quarter panel's been joined on. So you can see down the edge there and both of those big seam welds. So that is most of the filler work on that replacement quarter panel. Uh, there, I have had to put a second skim on there, wasn't quite right, and there's a little bit around this stud to do, but yeah, we've, we've, we're virtually there. So I'm gonna move my attention to this door edge, which is quite nasty, so uh, I'm not sure whether that's showing up very well or not. But fortunately, we have now got the new wing, I think Rob's mentioned that previously, so I can use the new wing profile to make sure I get this door right. Um, if I shut it from that angle, possibly. Mm, yeah, you can kind of see it. Black isn't the best color really to, uh, to show on camera. But yeah, it's quite nasty there. So we'll have a go at that and see how we get on. Onto the repair on that front door, straight out with the big guns, the slide hammer there. Pulls out the majority of the damage and then he's got his little panel hammer. Just getting that edge about right, then Chris will work on the dent. So on with the DA there, get that all cleaned up, get all of the paint removed and then clean it all up, knock up some filler and that little tiny dent that's left in that door can have a tiny little skim in it and he found a little pin dent at the back there. So Chris is in there knocking down that filler. I don't want to be around the dust, number one. And number two, I've got a lorry on its way with another peach on the back. But just as I'm walking past here, I'm going to bring my attention to my beautiful little Fiesta Turbo. So those of you, quite a lot of you know that I bought this a few months ago. And the guy I bought it from has actually had this car completely refurbished, restored. And that is why I bought it, because it took so long to do the Escort and finding somebody to do it, the time, etc. I just bought this one, already done. And I bought it off the back of, I'm actually moving house. We bought a new house, it was all going through. And last week, the people that we was buying from have actually decided they don't want to sell their house and they're gonna stay. So that has all fallen through and I still haven't got a garage to put this little car in. So it is with great regret, I am actually gonna say, I'm going to let this little car go. So if anyone is interested in this little Fiesta Turbo, beautiful example, piles of paperwork, again, all being restored, you can email me, sales, S-I-U-K, at gmail.com. I'm going to be absolutely gutted to see it go, but unfortunately, it's not going to do it any good sitting out here over the winter, and I genuinely have got nowhere to put it at the moment. So if you're interested, drop me an email. Let's get out there and get this new car. So rubbing down that little tiny bit of filler on the front and then you've got that little pin dent to do as well. But you can see there was literally hardly anything in that door, just one little tiny skim. And then once you knock it back, it becomes quite transparent where he got so much of that dent actually removed. That's the passenger side front door all repaired. 
That is the door repaired and there was another little tiny pinhole dent on that back edge that I'd done at the same time. Also came around and finished that quarter off and put a bit of stopper on it. So we're pretty much there with, with this side. So I can, uh, I can go ahead and get that cleaned up now and get some masking on it ready for priming. Now onto the masking up, you just mask around the areas that you're gonna be priming inside. Then you can pull the poly mask out, actually tape to the poly mask, cut out the areas that are gonna be primed and then get those primed. I think that's quite self-explanatory. So on with the poly mask then and you'll see it goes round and actually leaves the parts that are gonna be primed clear. So on with a couple of nice thick coats of that primer there and all of the repairs are now gone. So quite a lot of you have seen this car in the background of quite a few videos lately, the Fiesta, the BMW, and it's, it's not embarrassing because we've been busy. I've actually been on holiday, I went down to Newquay on the Harley Davidson, done 718 miles with my mate, which was absolutely unbelievable. I think the furthest I've ever been on the Harley was about an hour ride. And this car has actually been on the jig for about a month Chris, why, oh, I'll include a little bit of video, absolutely beautiful, if anyone's not been down to Newquay, we know Chris loves Cornwall anyway, but we ended up at Newquay, went to St Ives, I will include a couple of little videos. <laughs> So as you can see, I had a great time. And why I was away, just as I got back, Chris actually primed this, and he had to pack his bags and get out the door as well. You went off to a Land Rover yes, yes. experience. Yes, Land Rover uh, experience that came as part of purchasing the new car. The Discovery, you get, uh, the yeah, yeah, Defender. You, you get an invite to do a sort of half day. Right. So, we had a day off because it was my birthday. Oh yeah, of course it was Chris's birthday yesterday, yeah. so he went and, and done that. And um, yeah, and Amanda and I both had a drive of a new Defender around an off-road. Uh, Have you got any video footage? Yeah, we, we've got a little bit of that. People yeah, will be interested in that. Yeah, a couple photos, yeah. So we'll include that now. In the left-hand grass. Yeah on your left foot, close but not on it. Okay. And then you see those two lumps ahead of us? Yep. Oh yeah. So if I could get you to pause here, Chris, that's a really good line. Okay. Now, we need to be back into rock crawl, right. and I'll explain okay. what we're doing. That is this yeah. one, yeah. The idea is that we're gonna try and pivot the weight of the vehicle between these right. two wheels. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. so this wheel will be off the ground, yep. and then the one behind Evie will be off the ground. All right, okay. So, um, we allow the car to crawl, might need a little bit of encouragement to go up the bump. Yeah. And then when I say stop, brake hard, okay. okay? So nice straight wheel, and you're in a really good position there, actually. I like the fact that when I, when I ask you to do a straight wheel, you actually do it. Um, some people don't, both of you. So, so get ready to give it a little, now break. Go a little bit more. Break hard. Oh, look at that! Wow. Oh, uh, well, well executed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very so good. So that back wheel is still off the ground. It's off isn't the ground. It? Yeah. So if you put the car in reverse for a second, now just inch just, back yeah, a tiny it's bit. It's going to go. Feel it? Yeah. You can play with it. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 
So the old Defenders would have done that mechanically. Yes. But these vehicles, the wheels are kind of hunting for the ground, the, the technology. Yeah. So let's let's inch forward and, and feel that tip. That's yeah. very good. Okay, yeah. let's allow the car to go forward. And we're going to go over towards those bales, Chris, and we'll do what we call pilot. So we've both been out basically living the dream, having a nice living time. The dream, mate, and yeah. do you know what? It has been absolutely like just four days off I had there, and it was amazing to have the wind blowing through your air riding down that A303 on that bike, and I know you love that. So we got the car to that point, and it is pretty much I said I was going to get on the front bumper early in this video. I still haven't. No. So I need to get on with that front bumper, strip a couple of bits out the back bumper. And I guess, mate, you're going to continue on with this. Yeah, I've got to block block those repairs off now. That's a guide coat on there, Rob, as we've mentioned previously. Yep. I'll, so, shall I mention what this is for? Because people still do ask. So, basically, when Chris is rubbing that down, if you've got any black marks left in there, they're going to be low spots in there. So, you you basically put the guide coat on so that you get that a hundred percent before they lay down the but paint. Essential, you do that with a block now. Yes, because that's what obviously. If you do it. it with your hand, you, you're not going to achieve what no, you want to. No, so a completely so flat block. Block, block all that off now, and that that will show any any tiny pinholes that I might have missed. Yeah, that's really all you're trying to trying to do. Any any blemishes, and I've put quite. I know that the the putting the little bit of uh, primer on there uh, was a tiny little bit of recording. But that's because I've got a new phone, isn't it? Yeah. And the last phone... Covered in overspray. Yeah, so we're trying to avoid that now. So yeah. everyone's seen me chucking a bit of primer on, haven't they, Rob? Yeah. So I, I just recorded the first little bit and then uh, took my phone away. But the, yeah, it's got lots and lots of primer on there. So um, plenty to play with. Plenty to play with. All right, mate, I guess we we need to get this one off this yeah, jig, we do. don't we? we do. We've got another one to go on here, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'll get on that front bumper, I suppose, and we'll let you crack on with this, but let's continue on. So, the lower arm on these, they are a nightmare, because anyone, I tell you, when you're working with metal and aluminium that are joined together, it is always hard work. And these lower ball joints are metal, and they're going in to aluminium. And the top ones, I think, are the most awkward ones, but a bit of beating around there and uh, plenty of WD-40, and we got there with it in the end. So as usual, absolutely saved there by Reclamet with that replacement arm. We could not get one. We could only get a pattern one, but couldn't get it for two days. We literally had to wait for it. So I got on the phone to Gary as usual, and I did run and drop that Citroen C3 off down there to him because we actually sold that to him and had 500 quid profit. And I've come and gone and grabbed this leg. He hasn't charged us yet. He said, take off what you need and then bring back what you don't. And then of course he'll charge us accordingly. So. I was going to take this in, but it's very heavy. I think I'll get Chris to work on it out here, remove it, because it'll probably actually be a lot easier. Let's go and get the tools, actually, yeah, and do that there. Then you can get that fitted to the car. It's cracking, cracking job there, mate, and I think definitely over the worst of it. Yeah, getting there, aren't we? We're getting there. It's always a lot of work, changing a quarter panel, changing, like, the seal area. Anything yeah, like that. Yeah. It is all quite a lot of work but look at that car now it really really has pulled together i think it's that we get this outside now actually to take a picture of it and then i guess we'll just make a start on the bumpers well i've got that bit of flat in it to do it yeah more, but, um, well it'd we'll, be nice to do it outside now mate we will now it's um <laughs> front lower arm was on there and it was just the front near side rear lower arm if that makes any sense to you and i think you would agree now that one's pointing in the right direction. So is that one. And the steering wheel is pretty much where it needs to be. So you well, I think you might drive a bit nicer you've now. You've nailed that, mate. Yeah, do you know what? Give it, and I've done that ad blue pipe as well. So yeah. this shouldn't leak any ad blue now. No. Should we try a little drive in that? Because you yeah, didn't do too good. I'm gonna move um I'm gonna move these other cars out of the way, Rob. And then get it out, yeah? Yeah, yeah we'll Let's do, do it. Last time Chris drove this, it was an absolute fail. That's better. Yeah. Yeah, not, not, pull it. not fighting you now, no. you know. But it was a bit pigeon toed, wasn't it? It was terrible, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's good. Sounds nice as well. Yeah, very good. Nice at the fact that it does, it's not leaking ad blue everywhere as well. I think it's a case of getting that bit of flatting off done, getting those 
getting the rear, we've got a new rear bumper, haven't we? That's got a little mark in it. That needs doing, and the front bumper possibly needs a little piece. I very nearly caught some of the new projects in the background there. We have got one, two, three, four new projects in the background, and they're absolutely lovely. Right, what's the plan back in the yard? Yeah, it's so nice to see this car finally on its wheels yeah. with all of that, you know, that hard body work done. Yeah. I just said I very nearly caught all those new projects in the background and yeah. there's some beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah. bits there, yeah. isn't we, there? We've been busy buying a few bits, We mate. have, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, let's get it in the workshop, mate, and then I guess continue on yep. for the next video. Yep, OK. Yeah, let's do it. Yep. What do you then, Chris? That is the end of today's video, Rob. If you did enjoy it, guys, we'd appreciate you hitting that thumbs up. Put your comments and your thoughts in the comments section down below. Chris is going back outside to take a thumbnail because he forgot. He is laughing now. That is, yeah, that's the end of today's video. We'll see you all very, very soon in the next one. Just before we do go, I did want to mention our TikTok is at Selvage Rebuilds UK. I know there's another uh, TikTok out there. It is nothing to do with us. They've just tried to copy our name somehow. I did mention it on Instagram. Also, the links for our Instagrams are down below. I'll put the TikTok one down there as well. And we've also got a Twitter. And I think that was my own personal Twitter. And I just changed it to Selvage Rebuilds UK a long time ago so that we had that as well. But anyway, all the links for those are in the uh, description down below. We'll see you soon. An American moves to Ireland. He's, he goes to the local golf course. He says... I've just moved here from America. I want to play around the golf with someone, but I'm quite good. Is there anyone here I can play with? They said, oh, you want to play with Micheline? Here's his phone number, ring him up. He'll play with you, he's quite good. So he rings him up, he says, oh, I've just moved here from America. The guys have told me you'd play around the golf with me. He said, yeah, I'll play around the golf with you. He said, I'll meet you there in the morning at nine o'clock, but I could be half an hour late. He says, all right, no problem. So he turned, the American turns up, Micheline turns up. He says, uh, he pulls out a set of left-handed golf clubs, goes round, plays around the golf, and Micheline wipes the floor with him, wins hands down. He says, uh, could you, would you play me again tomorrow? He said, yeah, yeah, I'll play you again tomorrow. I'll meet you here at nine o'clock. I could be half an hour late. So the next morning he turns up, Micheline turns up, nine o'clock, pulls out a set of right-handed golf clubs. The American ain't said nothing. He's just gone round, played around the golf with him. And Mickling's wiped the floor with him again. Right. He says, oh, I, I can't have that. Like, would you play once more with me again tomorrow? He says, yeah, yeah, I'll be here tomorrow, nine o'clock. But I might be half an hour late. He said, what is this? You turned up the first day with left-handed golf clubs. You turned up the next day with right-handed golf clubs. What, what's the story there? How do you choose? He says, when I wake up in the morning, I look at my wife. If she's lying on the left side, I choose my left-handed golf clubs. If she's lying on the right, I choose my right-handed golf clubs. He said, what about if she's lying on her back? He said, I'll be half hour late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wondered where that was going. That was good.